everyone and welcome back to the Park Lane podcast episode number 31. Now, first of all, I need to apologize for all of you sitting there waiting for us to start. We have to blame Holly Agambar, who still isn't here. Poor thing, <laughs> forgot to restart a computer. So she will be joining us in the next five to ten minutes. But until then, you have to put up with these two lovely faces. Uh, my name is Luke and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Harry. How are you doing, Harry? No, I'm very good. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. I'm in a great mood. I'm hoping Spurs don't ruin that. I'm feeling really, really positive. I'm always happy to be here, Luke. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, so we're going to jump in with the shout out. So shout out to Coys, shout out to ha- uh, to Johnny and uh, to Rihanna Grace, who said, where's my father? Ha ha. I've never heard that one before. Keep the good <laughs> jokes coming in. Right, so Harry, let's crack on till we wait until Holly jumps in. Yeah. Um, let's start this show by kicking off with the uh, incredibly shit performance that Spurs put in against Everton on Monday night. So talk to me about your thoughts nearly a week later about how we performed. Oh, he's trying to ruin my mood here. No, it was, it was, it was terrible. And it, it feels like Conte's still here. You know, I, I think the performance was better. I think we had intensity, especially in that first half. I was someone at half time going, oh, my goodness, I, I didn't expect this. You know, because when you see the team, it's the, it's the same team, it's the same formation. And you thought it would be the same tactics, but it's, it's a little bit interesting. You know, as I said, that tempo was there, a little bit of pressing. I thought the better team, but ugh, just typical Tottenham, you know, we, we we go and do that. I mean, you give Michael Keane that much space. I mean, come on. Lucas, again, is partly to blame. I mean, Russia bloods the head. But at the same time, you know, why do you bring him on? And I don't get why you sit back against 10 men for a team that are fighting to be in the Premier League next season. For me, you go for the second and try and kill the game. And But at the same time, perhaps he could also go wrong. But, I mean, that's that's a wonder goal by Michael Keane. And it's, it won't happen every day. It reminds me of Vincent Company for City. But I could just see, when, when you watch it, the amount of space he was given, we're inviting him to shoot. You know, he's in a similar position to Vincent Company. You can't give anyone that space in football. I mean, I, I could have a go. I'm not saying it's going to go in, but you can have a go. So you shouldn't have been given that much space. Generally, a week on, disappointing because I think it was an opportunity. Uh, it was an opportunity to go third, of course. Yeah, exactly. Right. No, no, I completely agree. I have to do cut you off, cut you off short because uh, Holly has finally joined us. Good morning, Holly. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm sorry again. Better late than never, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm looking forward to this. Um, Eleven o'clock on a Saturday, so it's a new one for me. I'm liking it. Exactly. And for those of you that don't know, I've been trying to get Holly on this show for probably since we started this new format. So to be fair to her, being you know eleven minutes late compared to dismissing me 30 other times in a row um, uh, you know, I think yeah. that we're, uh, we're okay with that so Holly I will jump to you to start off with uh, we were just touching on uh, Monday night's game and kind of like your thoughts since then and how you kind of think you know it went um yeah it's it's a it's a tough one is it because it's just at the moment the Tottenham way of always making things really difficult for ourselves and then as soon as it something gets easy for us them going down to 10 men it looked like we were even worse than what we were when it was 11 v 11 um so yeah it was a big disappointing one um since then I'm just kind of like oh whatever let's get the next game over and done with because at this point in the season I'm just so done with life at the moment um it seems like it's a disappointment every week um and especially with obviously Brighton today I'm sure we'll get onto it, but I feel like it's going to be another tough one because we looked at Everton and they were a team that I thought, okay, we're in a bit of a rough patch, but we should be okay. But against Brighton, the way we performed against Everton with 10 men, well, against 10 men, I'm thinking to myself, I don't think this is going to go very well today. No, no, look, I I completely agree with with what both of you guys have said, you know, in, in terms of that. The problem is for me, and it always will be for me at the moment, is that, and I, and I do feel bad slightly for Stellini, but he doesn't help himself. Do you know what I mean? Like, this was his time. If he really wanted to step up, and this is why I'm really annoyed at the moment. Like, if he wanted to step up and become a manager and to stamp himself, you know, into a position where technically he could he could push himself into contention to actually become the Spurs boss. You know, like, this isn't just... Unless he's been told something completely different. Like, this isn't just, oh, you know, see out the end of the season, then go back to being Conte's number two. For me this was a time for him to kind of step up and become a first team coach or manager, whatever you want to call it. And my God, 
it's just Conte in disguise, isn't it? Like, I'm surprised the crowd don't start singing that today because, you know, it, it, there is no point in sacking Antonio Conte if you're going to end up with Stellini playing exactly the same, maybe worse football than Antonio Conte would do. You know, to sit there and go, oh, yeah, five of the backs worked for us well all season. We'll just stick with that, shall we? You know, you'd be better off having Ryan Mason playing four at the back. I just, none of it makes any sense to me. And it's it's really aggravating me. But, Harry, what are your thoughts, you know, kind of on the way that we started the game to try and press a little bit, but then it died off as per usual? Um, you know, we, we were playing a Sean Dice low block, you know, all these kind of things that everyone talks about. But they were pressing us higher. They were running faster. Iwobi was absolutely immense against us, you know, from the bits that um, that I saw. You know, it's just a joke, isn't it? Like, this is one of the worst teams in the Premier League and we're outplayed. Yeah, it, it's just shocking, really. And I just think Everton were really up for it. You know, they need every point to stay in the Premier League. And we, we played like a team. We've got nothing to play for. Uh, it's been a dis- disappointing season, don't get me wrong. We've still got top four to play for. I thought we started okay. I thought tempo was good, but like you said, Luke, it, it instantly died off, which was which is a shame. And you know, like again, towards the end of the game, we invite pressure, we make things difficult. Uh, I mean, we, we're playing a team that that could potentially be in the championship next season for sure. They're fighting for their lives, and they're ten men as well. And we're still sitting back. I mean, what more do you need? How many more? How many less players do they need for you to, to go at them? For me, you go and get the second goal. And like you say, Luke, I, I don't get. You know, I don't get the idea of appointing Stellini. For me, it's only got to be to get to get rid of Conte and that you know relationship, Conte and the players, just to get him out of there because Stellini is his right hand man. I mean, we, we saw that it's basically the same. I mean, I wanted him to stamp his authority, change a few bits, uh, and I, I want still want him to do well, but it's, it's not looking um, very likely by some of the decisions he makes. And after the game, he defends what he done and defends sitting back. Crazy, yeah. Holly, what are your what are your thoughts? We'll touch on the the sending off. Um, soon, but what are your thoughts on the way that we reacted to that? You know, we weren't playing well anyway, and that was kind of a blessing in disguise for us, or we thought it would have been. Um, but what are your thoughts on on Stellini as a whole, and also kind of like what he did afterwards? You know, uh, who's yeah, what... main to blame? Is it him or the players for that end of the game? I think it's just a combination. Uh, I, know, I know everybody used to talk about the Conte comments that he made and stuff, but it's kind of like not that hindsight's a beautiful thing, but you sit here and think, actually, yeah, there is some truth in what Conte said in terms of these players just can't do it. But it's not the first time we've ever thought that. Um, and the fact that they're still here, still doing those same things, not obviously playing on this, that and the other. But you would have thought when he go down to 10 men, that's the kick up the butt they were like. They were like, oh, yeah, let's go and get that second. Let's go and make sure we get these three points. Instead, we thought, oh, yeah, it's fine now. The game's won. We're up to 11. They're down to 10. They're not really pushing us, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, we're on the back foot again. We're we're putting ourselves under the cosh. We're making silly... I think it was Dio who made a couple of um, passes that went to Everton players and they were nearly on through. So, for me, I I really... I don't... I get the appointment with Stellini in the sense that everybody was in uproar when Ryan Mason came in and, and took charge for a little bit. And maybe they were thinking, we'll give Stellini a shout because I still think that they've put... Conte on gardening leave in the terms that they haven't necessarily sacked him. They've just been like, well, let's get him out of the way. Let's put Stellini in. Because I don't know about you, it's the first time I've ever seen a sacking where all the the, the team and the management yeah. under Conte are still there. So for me, I'm thinking, well, it's not a sacking then because they all would have gone. Um, so I think yeah. it's just of a way of saying that we've got Conte out the problem, which is what the fans want, but I don't want to pay the fee. So let's just get him out of the way, put Stellini into the end of the season and we'll go from there. So yeah. it's it's a tactical one, I think. I don't think it's one of, again, a footballing an approach. I think it's one of a business approach in terms of let's not pay him off, let's just keep him. Um, so I would have thought that Stellini would have put his own mark in, but even before the game, he was saying, oh, I've worked alongside Conte for a while. Um, I'm not really going to change anything. That, I didn't, he didn't say those exact words, but it was almost like, we've got a yeah. plan, we're going to stick with it, and this is how we're going to go. So I wasn't really looking forward to much because obviously everybody's saying oh we've got a new manager bounce and I'm thinking it's it's not gonna be a new manager bounce. No no and I think you're probably exactly spot on there Holly with with the way you've said it. You are right, you know Conte brought in a lot of staff Mm. and a lot of people with him. And as you said, nobody else left along with him. So it's uh 
it's a really strange one. Uh, Cody said, I was one of Conte's biggest defenders, but keeping Stellini after sacking Antonio Conte has to be one of the dumbest decisions they've made. And that's saying something. Hope you're all well. Um, yeah, I think it's such a weird one, isn't it, at Spurs at the moment? And you're right, you know, having Ryan Mason in to the end of the season, like we did, you know, season or so ago, you know, maybe it's not the the right thing to do. But I also don't think that keeping Stellini in charge, playing a formation that doesn't work, like how many games do we have to go in and lose or play badly for anybody to realise that this five at the back formation is never going to work? It just it just blows my entire brain. Um, we're playing with an extra but, defender. We, we can't defend. That, that's the joke of it. Yeah, but I always <laughs> think that we're missing out in midfield as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's okay to have five at the back, but if the ball's constantly being peppered at your centre-backs and your wing-backs, you're always going to uh, concede chances. Um, mm. Johnny, the resident Arsenal fan, has said, for me, the red card was harsh. Bit of key- Kane simulation, like he was hit by a thunderbolt in the oh, face. But in reality, he was just pushed and that's all it took. Fair play, what is that? Um, so let's let's move on to that because... You know, that is a classic uh, rival comment. I, there was a lot of people talking about this, you know, when, when I was watching it and people texting me and, and all these other things. The more you watch it and the more it happens, like there's no other choice from the referee. Like Kane is clever. Kane is a very, very clever player. And there are other very good, clever players in the Premier League. We could talk about Sadio Mane when he was here, Mohamed Salah. Uh, we could talk about Bruno Fernandes, Rashford. There's, there's hundreds of these players, right, in the Premier League that know where to leave their feet, where to, you know, we could talk about Gabriel Jesus last weekend when he won a penalty for Arsenal, you know, knowing where to get the touch, how to go down. Kane has always been like that as well, and he will always be like that because he knows how to win and he knows how to get decisions to go his way. But let's be honest, Takore has pushed him with his fingers in the face. There's no other choice. I don't... Maybe even if Kane doesn't go down, he still gets sent off um, if the rules are what the rules are. But, Holly, what are your thoughts on that in general? Because Sean Dyche uh, was not happy. No, he weren't. But uh, to be honest, I don't, when, I don't know how he couldn't not be happy because I'm being funny. Like, if someone comes to you with their hand, their bare hands to your face, I'm not kidding you. Even I know you said he's a resident Arsenal fan, but if that happened to Saka, you're telling me what? He's just going to stand his ground and not go down yeah. and simulate it. Yes. Um, it no, he's definitely going to do it. So I think the, the, the red card was fair. Um, yes, okay, you saw that he also, uh, Carrie Kane got booked as well. So if that's argument of simulation, there you go, he got booked too. So there's no argument for that. Um, but I think that's just the nature of the game now. If someone's going to come to you, any kind of physical violence, whether it's to the face or whatever, you're going to get booked or you're potentially going to get sent off. So I think it was just a bit of a frustration from Decore. Um, I think if he rewatches it, he's probably annoyed with himself that he, he went to that kind of scenario. Um, but yeah, I have no qualms about it. It was, it was a red card, done and dusted. And then, Holly, I'll come back to you quickly. And then Lucas Mora jumps in on the pitch and decides, you know, I haven't played for a long time. There's been It's been a while since my name's been in the Spurs headlines. So, do you know what? I'll just go and absolutely snap someone. Honestly. Michael Keane, I think it was, actually. Like, what is going on? At least now, the fans might be happy because Dan Dewan might get some minutes at some point. <laughs> Honestly, I I think that's the thing. I think because he's been so out of sync with playing football, making those little rash decisions is what's going to cost him. And obviously we saw it cost him because he literally kebabbed uh, Keane. So that being said, again, I have no qualms about that either because that is a, it is a straight red, let's be real, because it was just the way that it was just so unlike Lucas Mora. And I think that is because he hasn't had many minutes. Um, but yeah, I don't want to say I'm happy because you never obviously want to see a, a player be sent off that's your own. Um, but when it's justified, it's fine. But then I'm thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, if the bench wasn't bad enough, now what is going on? But like you say, maybe it is a blessing in disguise because we will actually see Dan Juma see a blade of grass, which would be nice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, and Holly, in case you missed that, uh, Johnny did say that uh, Saka will probably do the same and that is cheating as well. So Thanks. at least we've got a fair argument there. Uh, <laughs> Harry... Talk to me about uh, these two red cards. Okay, they're, they're both red cards for me. I, I want to I want to make that straight. The core, the joke of it is now you've got ex footballers, you've got pundits. They're still crying about it. You know, now I listen to talk sport this morning. They're still going on about it. They 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 can't cope um, that the, the core has got that red card. I think it's personally a gender against Kane, a gender against Tottenham. But 
you know, I get called out for that. Um, and, you know, it's just it's just ridiculous because it's violent conduct. It is what it is. You know, you can't just see what annoys me is people have only called Kane out. For example, on Twitter the other day, I called out um, Ian Dark from, from BT, who wasn't happy with me that I stated he had an agenda against Kane, but he couldn't provide me with any evidence that he'd ever criticised any other player than Kane. And it's now been two days and he still hasn't got back to me about any anyone else other than Kane that he's criticised about this or called out making jokes about him being in hospital, for example. I mean, come on, he's, he's violent conduct. He's poked him in the face. I mean, if you find it, I understand if people think that that's maybe not necessarily cheating, but perhaps diving a bit. If you don't think it's a red card, then none of them are red cards. You know, everyone would have done what Kane's done. If that happened to not being funny, but someone like Saka or someone like Martinelli, you know, Arsenal fans would have said he's been murdered. You know, they wouldn't have wanted a prison sentence. So, honestly, you can't win. I think it is something against Tottenham and against Kane. It's just ridiculous. And you get ex footballers done, it should be strict as England captain. I mean, come on. It, it, it's, it's clever from Kane, but it, it's a foul. It drives me mad, and I'm still waiting to hear back from that Ian Dark. <laughs> Making friends as always, Harry. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I don't I don't really like this word agenda, right? I don't really like this whole thing that, like, you know, one fan base moans that their players or their team are, you know, under the spotlight more than others. You know, you do hear it from Arsenal fans about, the VAR decisions and other things like that. Like, that's not what I'm about. But I do agree with you to a certain extent. You know, Harry Kane, if he becomes, when he became England's number one uh, all-time goal scorer, you know, he hadn't scored enough goals that weren't penalties. Harry <sighs> Kane, when he misses a penalty in the Euros, it's his fault. Harry Kane, when he doesn't score in a final, it's his fault. Harry Kane, if he's clever on the football pitch and, you know, trying to win games for his club, that's again, you know, there is a lot of these things about Harry Kane, and the one thing you will st- you will say about him compared to I would say ninety nine percent of professional footballers is his attitude off the pitch and his humility in himself is something that's I think admirable, and he should be getting a lot more respect than he is. But that's just the way it is, isn't it? Um, so. You know, obviously, at the end of the game, we had an absolute thunderbolt for Michael Keane. I would say never again does he score a goal like that. Uh, Harry, you said earlier, you know, reminded you of the Vincent Company goal for City. And I think it's exactly like that. But quick question, Holly, before we round, wrap this up. Do you think that result was, uh, you know, deserved? Do you think we didn't deserve anything more than that? I think so. I think that the fact that even when Everton were down to 10 men, yes, we stepped off it, but they still kept going and we just gave up maybe 20 minutes in. Um, So I I actually think if the game went on for another 10 minutes, we would have lost. I generally think that was how I was feeling. Um, And it's annoying because, again, it's these same players. Yes, we can we can blame the manager. Yes, we can blame Stellini. But it's these players at the end of the day that are still here, that are still costing us. Um, so, yeah, I just got to the point where I was like, fair play, Evan. Like, you deserve that thunder strike. Like you say, he's never going to score one like that again. Um, but full credit to them to keep going because we just gave up. Yeah, exactly. Harry, do you agree? Yeah, I completely agree. And I think it's a wonder goal. And like you say, you know, he's never going to score that again. But at the same time, you look at the amount of space he's given. I mean, he's, he's, he's inviting him to shoot. Of course, he's going, of course he's going to get it on target. I mean, any one of us can have a go. Whether it's going to go in or not is a different story. Michael Keane, it was perfect. It curved. Uh, Larice again, the, the, he's, he's not even going to try and get there. I mean, getting there is one thing. I would have liked him to try, but I think he was just shocked that he shot. But at the same time, he's got to be his captain. He's got to say, push it out a bit. You know, there's, there's nothing from Larice as a captain vocally. And people go, uh, you know, shouting, you don't, you don't really need that for a captain. Of course, it's not the main job of a captain, but that's one of the things to be vocal, to lead by example. For me, Larice doesn't done doesn't do that. So as one as good as a wonder goal it is, and Stellini can sit there after their game and go in, oh, you know, another day it wouldn't have happened, another day would have hold on, Keane wouldn't have scored that goal, but we invited it. I mean, if you invite so let's say the likes of James Madison, Bruno Fernandez, random examples, you give them that room, they're gonna score as well. I mean, again, Brighton today, if you give McAllister that room, Trossard. Uh, Arsenal, for example, when he was at Brighton, he he would score that as well. So fr- frustrating, that, but it's just it's just so Spurs. Yeah, no, I, I get it, you know. But from what I've seen this season under Conte Ball, as I'm calling it now, um, because that's <laughs> what we, we, it still is, is um, I I believe that he would rather uh, you know allow players opposite uh, opposition 
players to have possession in less dangerous positions. So therefore sitting back on the edge of your box and allowing, you know, those shots, the majority of those shots don't go in. But as we saw from the likes of Thomas Partey against us um, and, you know, Michael Keane, sometimes they do go in. And then you've got to sit there and say, you know, why is nobody uh, pushing out? But look, the game is over. We lost our spot in top four. And uh, we've got a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do. Um, before we move on, I completely forgot to do this. So I will very quickly do this. Um, yeah. Quick <laughs> shout out to Secure VPN. If you're interested in VPNs, go on Secure VPN forward slash Park Lane Pod. And uh, you can check it out. Use Park Lane Pod in the checkout and you get 25% off your first month. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. Uh, right. So let's move on to a little <laughs> bit kind of uh, not so footballing talk. Uh, there's been a new appointment at Spurs. And, you know, I find this one quite interesting. There are still a lot of people who are somehow finding negatives to talk about this. So we're going to discuss it right now. Now, the announcement says that Scott Munn, whoever Scott Munn is, has become the chief footballing officer at Spurs. Holly, tell me everything you know about Scott Munn. Uh, I know that his name is Scott, and I know that his last name is Munn. Um, no, it... <laughs> I'm kind of in two minds. I'm not going to be negative because I think it is a good thing. Um, it either means that, uh, what's his face, uh, Paratici is off skis uh, and we've managed to obviously keep uh, a reserve, make sure we've got someone ready. Um, or it means that Daniel Levy is going to get his hands out of the footballing business. Um, I'm not too sure on that last one, but hopefully that will be the case. I just think it's a good appointment. It means that we're actually planning for once, which is nice. Yeah. Now, I'll move on to you, Harry, in a second, but hello, Marlon. Nice to see you. Hey. Hey, you right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, mate. Um, my thoughts on this, before I move on to you, Harry, is yeah. the latter, Holly, to, you know, I see it as he will be, if or whoever becomes in Fabio Paratici's position, he will then be the senior to them, and therefore he will look up, from what the statement states, you know, regarding uh, he will be making the footballing decisions. Again, I have no idea who this guy is. To be honest, a lot of Spurs pages also don't know who this guy is because one page put a picture of a guy who's not even the right guy. So um, I'm sure we'll find out soon. But Harry, what are your thoughts on Scott Munn? Um, similar to you, Luke, I think. I think it's a, it's a good appointment. You I mean, you could look at it. Again, there's, there's so many things in Tottenham. You could look at it in so many different ways. Uh, with this... You could look at it as in going, oh, it's a good appointment, someone to make the football decisions. Perhaps that would mean Levy will step back from the football side of things. If so, great. Or people could look at it and go, we said that about Paratici. At the end of the day, Levy had that extra power in the end. And we never never really felt like, did it, that Paratici had full control. You always felt Levy had a say or a nose in some effects. So it depends which way you look at it. But generally, good and hopefully. But I think at the same time, this is also a negative thing. This is Levy's way of saying... Fine, you know, I'll, li I'll listen to fans. I'll step back, which you want me to do from the football side of things, but I'm not going anywhere. I'll just step back from the football side of things. It's still going still to be here. I'm not going anytime soon. So it depends what you look at. It. Yeah, the statement says that he'll take charge of all footballing decisions. We said that about Paratici. I don't think that's entirely accurate, is it? But um, same thing I'm with sure Daniel Levy will still find himself in a coffee shop with somebody for the five hours trying to discuss something that could take five minutes. Uh, but Marlon, I'll jump on to you, mate. Good to see you again. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this matter? It's just another cover-up, isn't it, for Levy? Let's be oh, honest. Oh, no conspiracies are out. I love it. Keep of going. course it is. Like, <laughs> we'll, we'll be sitting here in 18 months, right, with the same problems, same issues, and you'll, you'll suddenly hear during the transfer window, oh, Levy had to get involved. Right, he, this is what he's doing. He's trying. He's trying to make us blame everyone else, so we don't have to look at him and his role. And as Harry just said, right? Yeah, I'm not. I'm going to be here, but I want the football inside. I'm going to sit there and show you the football inside is being dealt with by these guys, right? So you can't blame me when it all goes wrong. But we all know. We all full well know that he is not going to step aside in that. He loves it. He loves the transfer window, right? This is Daniel Levy. He ain't going to step aside, right? Um, and if it comes down to us paying a certain amount of money for a certain person and they go, he will step in. He will step in and make sure, as he, as he's always pointed out, it's got to be right for Tottenham, right? But at the end of the day, it might not be right for the coaches. So, yeah, I just, until I see it in action, 
let's see. I'm not going to sit there and completely dismiss it, but yeah. I think it's just another... It's like Paratici, right? When Paratici came in, it actually sat there and said he's going to be dealing with the football side. And then we hear that actually he puts all the signings on the table, but who does the negotiating in the end? It was Daniel Levy. So, again, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, yeah. you know, I'm wrong. I want to be wrong. I actually want to be wrong. But 21 years... Same, same old stuff, in it. So I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and be negative about it. But there's nothing to be positive about it either, because even when you look at the guy's CV, what's he really done? <laughs> so <laughs> that's what you have to look at. Man City were already a winning machine when he went there. Melbourne, you know, and then the other stuff is all rugby league stuff. So I'm kind of like, okay, it is what it is. But everything that comes out of the club right now, he's got, they've got to try and put a positive spin on it because fans are not happy. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I would say kind of playing devil's advocate a little bit, you know, in my personal opinion, like if this is what it is and what it reads on paper and it isn't, you know, smoke and mirrors and that kind of thing, to me, it would be the ideal situation for me personally. That's what I believe. I believe that the club is well run in terms of financially, um, you know, how everything has been built, et cetera, all the other stuff. The financial decisions off the field are good. So taking that stamp away from Daniel Levy would be perfect if, in reality, that's what it is. But you know, I you know, don't get me wrong, guys. You know, I, I called you a conspiracy theorist, Moran, but you know, my mind also goes to that at the same time. You know, I think every Spurs fan, no matter how you know, and, sure and that's you strange are, because me yeah. and you, when we come to this Levy, like, like we've had our things in the past, yeah, yeah. and the fact we're both thinking it and on the same page says a lot. <laughs> So. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Holly, do you agree? Do you, would you would you be happy, right? Hypothetically, Levy steps away, does his thing in the mm. background, and somebody we don't even know if this guy's any good or not, right? Nobody, I don't believe, could sit there and say they know everything about this fella because we only heard his name yesterday. Um, <laughs> but if that was the actual case, hypothetically, would you be happy with that, or are you know? Would you still like to see the back of the owners in general? It's difficult because, again, what we think is going to happen is totally different to what will probably actually happen. So I think I'd like to just get rid of him entirely because then he doesn't have his meddling fingers anywhere or he doesn't have to try and get his meddling fingers anywhere. But um, if it was the case that he did keep to his word and say, I'm, I'm taking a step back, I'm letting these guys do it, then yeah, sweet. Because that's always been our problem is him always in the last minute dipping his fingers in. Um so if that is the case and he is to step away from footballing businesses, then, yeah, sweet, I'm down for it. But until he's there, I can't really trust him, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, yeah, fair enough. Marlon, before I come to Harry, like, hypothetically, is that a good outcome for you? Or are you definitely like, nah, get no, out of yeah, I, I'm, I'm with Holly, like, at the end of the day, right, if, if it is what it is and he's stepping away from the football side of things, then, of course, I'm going to be happy. I'll be more than happy. I'll be over the, over the moon. But... I know what he's like. Like, I could, you know, he's been there how long and he always somehow seems to get involved. So I'm just kind of like, I'll have to wait out, wait out and see because I'd love it. In a perfect world, yes, it'd be brilliant, as you said. But as, as, you, as you can see, I'm done with trusting him. <laughs> I, can't, I can't trust him anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, that, and, that's my, and that's my thing. I can't, right? And, I, I, this is, and like I said, I want to be wrong. But... You know, I've been burnt too many times with him, way too many times. So I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to see how it is, get on with it. Because I'm at that stage where I'm beyond caring now. I'm mm. just there to support Spurs. So if if he's saying, actually, I'm listening to what the fans are saying, I'm going to step away from football, brilliant. But we've, we've seen and heard this before. And I just can't, I will get, I'll get on board with it. I'd like every manager he's ever picked, I've been on board with it. But... Like with Jose, you know it ain't gonna work out. You just have to go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. And Harry, no, I, I can't disagree with with Marlon or Holly. Uh, I, I think you know they're both spot on. I would, I'd be absolutely delighted if Levy stepped away from the football side of things. You know, as much as I want him to go all together, like you say, don't trust him. How can anyone trust him? You know, after you know what twenty one years, how can people trust him? Um, but I'd be happy. Yeah, if he stepped away from the football side of things, but. I'm not going to get carried away, if you like, because it was the same with Paratici. And like, for example, he always, you know, has to have the final say. 
I felt like he was never really, never really trusted Paratici, always the one, you know, looking over his office door, checking he's not doing anything he shouldn't. And I think it'll be exactly the same thing. You, me going, you make the decisions, but I will basically watch over you. You know, I know what you're up to kind of thing. Tr- almost, like, almost like a tracker, it feels like. So, yeah, I, I'd be happy if that was the case, but I don't believe that it's going to happen. I just believe it's something that looks good for Levy. And also you've got to remember the protest, you know, today. I know we said we're not going to bring it up, but, you know, we've seen already you know that 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 this appointment's come in um so could this be to to try and stop escalating problems today maybe that's that could be another factor Uh, because yes there's been a couple of things this week that has helped him you know not raising the season ticket prices and now appointing scott munn looking like levy's going to step back from the football side of things all of a sudden with these protests planned today doesn't look you know as many people will join as they would have because of this yeah, that, that is interesting. And, and I'll kind of go around the houses quickly before we move on to Brighton today. Um, Marlon, we'll come to you first. You know, it was the right thing to do to not raise season ticket prices, obviously. Like, what what were they thinking? Like, where, at which point did anybody think, oh, yeah, do you know what? Like, this is a good idea. We're playing, like, the worst football we've ever seen. And we've just sacked a manager. And yet we'll just, do you know what? We'll just increase the prices for the shits and giggles. Yeah. Look, no matter what anyone says, they were going to raise their prices. But yeah. everything that happened with Conte and everything that's happened in between, they had to take it back because if you speak to, like, even when you speak to people around the club, they was expecting a season ticket price rise, right? But everything, but at the end of the day, something has happened in the last couple of weeks. So they've put a positive spin on it. All right, we won't raise the season ticket prices, but all the food and drink and everything you need need on a match day will go up. They're going to incur the cost that way. And that's... They don't, exactly they don't tell you that, though. Yeah, they don't <laughs> tell you that, but that's where the cost will come, right? So <laughs> it's a positive spin. I can't complain. Season ticket holders must be over the bloody moon because they, they are paying the most at the moment to watch this. <laughs> so you can't really you can't really complain with that. But yeah, they, they just need positive stuff coming out of this club because everything is just negative. Like, literally, everything we've heard in the, like since Poch has left, let's be honest, everything that comes out of the club is just not ideal. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. It, it's it's got to that point where whether you're Levy in or Levy out, apart from that, all of us Spurs fans are on the same page. And that's, it's been a long time coming, right? Because that's, I think that's the only thing that we're all split about. But everything else, we want things to change and we want the club to change. And yeah. sometimes when you've had a man in there for 20 years who doesn't like to be told things, things will get stale. Things will start going wrong. It's It's going to happen. They need someone to get in there and future-proof it and actually go with the times, move with the times, as as they say. But this is Tottenham. <laughs> you know, you can't... They don't like to change things very quickly. They're opportunists and they're not really people that want to do things first. And that's and that's the way we are. We're like that in the transfer market as well. So, but yeah, let's see. Let's see and see what happens. The manager's... The, the, next, the, the next bit's the manager. And that's going to be the most well. important part to the whole thing. I want a one-word answer from you, and I'm going around. I'm going to ask everybody yeah. this: Who, and it's, who, who will be the next manager? And I want a one-word answer. <laughs> what? Who? Who we want it to be? Or, <laughs> or, who or, it's going to be? Who, who will is it be? Gonna be? <laughs> who will be? Are you asking first? No. Do you know what, Marla? Do you know what? I'll change this. Yeah. Who do you want, and who is going to be? Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll go first. Obviously, I want. I want Nagelsmann because I think actually perfect in a perfect world, he will work best with Levy and the way Levy wants things. He will coach and everything like that. Who it's going to be is either between, it's, it's probably going to be Rogers or Poch. Yeah. They're, they're the two. Holly, I, I, talk, to me, I want... talk to me quickly about season ticket prices and then you can do that. Uh, well, they have to do it, don't they? I mean, we still pay what the highest fees anyway, even if they have frozen yeah. it. Um, but again, it's just a positive spin, uh, like Marlon said, in the sense that we need to do something because there's going to be even more uproar. It's let's just try and keep them quiet for a little bit longer. Um, so it had to be done. Uh, managers wise, I want it to be Nagelsmann. Uh, who it's going to be, I think it's going to be Rogers. You know, my stance on Poch in terms of I think it's too soon, I don't think that's going to happen. So it's going to be Rogers. That is grim thinking. If it's it is very grim. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I tell you, we'll be happy. Wes will be over the moon. He will be. Answer, because that's, yeah. that's who he wants. Uh, Harry, <laughs> same for you. Go for it. 
Uh, firstly, season season ticket uh, prices. Obviously, they had to do it. You know, like you both allude to, um, it's a correct decision. But credit for to change for Tottenham and the supporters trust who constantly and the fans as well. We constantly went on and on at the club, and they had to do that. I believe that that Levy, you know, looked at the club, made a loss last year, looked at his bank account, looked at himself for. You know, I, I could I love this extra money. I mean, if I can get if I can get this opportunity, you know, through the window, you know. But like Marlon says, other things will go up. Like with the club shop prices will go up. It just won't be you're lucky. They won't make it a big thing or try not to let you know. Um, so it depends, you know, which way you spin it really. But with I can't probably give you a one word answer, Luke, like you want. Um, with you're such a politician. Who, <laughs> I, I know I always do this <laughs> with who, who I want and who I think we're going to get. Who is your goal? Like, <laughs> I try. I'm, I'm not trying to be good, but who do I who do I want? I'm fairly open minded with who I want. But if I could narrow it down, it'd probably be Nagelsmann or Poch. Who do I think we're going to get? I, I agree with you, Holly. I think we're going to get Brendan Rodgers because Levy's tried to get him before. He's he likes him. He's out of job, and and trust me, it, it wouldn't be the first time that Levy's tried. He he look at Brendan Rodgers and go, he he hardly spent any money with Leicester this year. I won't need to spend any money. Perfect. You know, he won't look at the fact that Leicester are probably going to be in the Championship next season. He'll look at the the fact that he he got them an FA Cup and got them what fifth twice. And he won't. He also won't look at the the fact that Leicester are in a Champions League place, uh, wherever, wherever it was two three years ago, and they they only got Europa League in the end. So he always look look at it like that. It wouldn't surprise me if he went for Rodgers. Holly, like you say, I think it's too soon to do Poch back as much as I'd like to see it. Levy's not going to accept that mistake of sacking him in the first place. So he's just going to go, I- I- I'll ignore that. Because I know what Levy's like. He, he's, he's, do you know what? That's probably why it didn't work out with Levy and Conte. They're both the same. Neither of them could admit mistakes. They both they knew it inside, but they can't admit it. And for Levy to admit that sacking Poch was a mistake and wasted the last four years, that would be that would be a point to him. But he won't do that. <laughs> we will not do that so we'll probably end up with Brendan Rodgers do you think I've got a question on that do you think the fact that Munn's come in right means that actually he will sit there and go actually Munn and Paratici depending on what happens with him wanted Poch back and that's why he won't get the everyone will go well he won't be the one making saying that he's made the mistake because actually it was two other people now that wanted Poch to come back yeah. it wasn't him yeah, no, <laughs> we, yeah, we know that Levy will have a final say on it and he'll go, that Brendan Rogers, he's good, isn't he? Like, like with like a completely different example, like the player in that documentary or that Harry Winks, he's, he's a good runner. I mean, that's the best compliment he can come up with. I mean, that's that's someone who doesn't know anything about football. That Brendan Rogers, he's a good manager, isn't he? He's won a trophy. So I, I, I just, I can see it. I mean, it's only, I think it's only a matter of time. He's at least going to try with Brendan Rogers. Hopefully he turns it down. Yeah, hope to God he does. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I'll I'll give my two cents, but I will do it properly this time, Harry, because that was the bloody longest word I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> it was close. Uh, you said it would answer. <laughs> I stopped counting at like five hundred. So uh, anyway, let's see if you can do it. Right. It's simple. Uh, who do I want, Nagelsmann? Who do I think? I've said this for a very, very 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 long time. <laughs> uh, Mauricio Pochettino, I think all these. I think it's. I think I've got. I've had no doubt for a long time. Even before Conte was shit. Even before all of this, I said. Conte Luke, will go in the summer. Conte will go in the summer, and it will be Mauricio Pochettino. Right. Let's move on, people, <laughs> to today's game. Uh, Harry, I'll start with you, and then you can stop talking for a long time. Um, <laughs> <Rude. but> Brighton <laughs> today. Yeah. You. The little birdie tells me you're quite positive about today, Harry. So let's start Absolutely. positively. Yeah, I know, I know. And I mean, Marlon, uh, I think Haz is doing it. But I'm on with you from the South Stand later. And you probably watch. I'd be completely different. But because Spurs will probably ruin that. But no, I'm feeling confident. I, I think we're going to win, actually. I mean, I think it's it's important game in the sense of we win. I mean, <laughs> it sounds stupid, but I actually fear Brighton behind us. You know, that they're consistent, they're playing good football, they're getting the results and they always find a way. They go behind three times against Brentford and they find a way. That one thing for sure is it won't be easy. And another thing for sure is that if we go behind that atmosphere, it's, that's going to be, it's either going to be silent or toxic, one or the other. It's, it's not going to be not going to be a pretty place, that's for sure. Um, I'd like to see us play exciting football, but Brighton play better football than us. So we'd probably be the ones sitting back holding on for a point but no trying to try to stay positive i think we win the game i think 
hopefully we go at Brighton because if we win, we're all of a sudden back in the mix for top four. But if we lose this conference league or Europa League, it looks like, but staying positive, going to win the game. <laughs> You're on mute. Every oh, time. There we go. Christ, my computer's messing about. Uh, <laughs> do you want uh, European football next season? Uh, and obviously, I, w- I want Champions League football, but at the same time, if we're going to play like we did against for someone like AC Milan, where we can't even bother to to have to try. We only need to score one goal, and the, the ball was in play in the end for 100 minutes. Played 100 minutes to, to score a goal, or at least try. I mean, I don't even think we had a shot on target. I mean, come on. If we play like that, then what's the point? But no, I want to be in the Champions League, but if I want to be in the Conference League or Europa League, and be, be laughed at, because I spent the whole of this season laughing at the fact that Arsenal were the the only team in in North London to 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 play on a Thursday night. I mean, the thought a year later that coming back to bite me hurts. So Champions League got nothing. That's the way I look at. It. But Fair trophies a trophy at the same time. Trophies a trophy. So who knows? Yeah, well, we can't even win that. So let's uh, forget all <laughs> that. About exactly that. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Holly. Thoughts on today's game? Do you, do you share the optimism that young Harry has? Uh, because to be honest, Harry is usually very pessimistic about Spurs. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody surprised me probably out this morning. Um, yeah, what do yeah. you think? Um, after Everton, I don't. It sounds horrible, but I don't really care anymore. <laughs> it's got to the point where I'm just like, it'll be what it'll be. Um, I think the only string of positivity I'm holding on to is the fact it's at home. Uh, I think if this game was away, I think I would just be like, I'm just not watching it. Um, but with it being at home, I feel like hopefully the fan. I feel like the fans will get behind us in, in say the first ten minutes. But if we capitulate like we did against Everton, um, then. I, I don't see it ending very well. Um, like we said, it's important with Brighton breathing down our neck that we do get something out of the game. Uh, whether we do is another matter. Um, I just hope that for once those players are like, wow, we played shockingly against Everton. We need to do something and turn up. But I, I just don't think they've got it in them either. How many times have we said that this mm-hmm. season? Exactly. So, yeah. again, when it matters, we seem to not to bother when it doesn't matter we seem to come out and play off everyone off the park so for me I feel like it's going to be one of those days it's going to be a bit rough not gonna lie yeah and Holly it is really important today because you know people need to realize that I think Brighton have three games in hand Mm -hmm. over us yep and so (laughs) you know for us to lose three points against them today and they have those game in hands over over us you know it could be disastrous so actually if we get three points today it makes it a lot better because that then becomes effectively two games in hand you know in terms of if they win all their three Mm -hmm. um so it makes it a little bit easier to stomach so uh, do you think that has any bearing on it or because it matters i don't think it does that's that's how i look at it in terms of every time a game has mattered for spurs We've always come close to it. We never get over the line. We have like an absolute blinder and don't do anything. Um, so with that down our necks, obviously with the the games in hands, with the fact that they're so close behind us, I just feel like we're just going to break. And it sounds horrible to think like that before the games even kicked off. But I feel like if I set myself up for fading now, I'm not that disappointed. Whereas every you week know, when I get myself like. pumped up, exactly, when <laughs> I get myself pumped you. up and then it goes to a mess, I just get more and more irate. So if I go in thinking, oh, this is going to be rough, then we're all right. <laughs> <laughs> No, do you know what, Holly? I actually echo everything that you said. I'm pretty much done with Spurs this season. Like, whatever happens you now happens. One. Like, you always you know, I, 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 I know. I even like it. For, you cast it. I'd even like it. <laughs> huh? You cast it every time you say we're going to win. <laughs> if we don't, mind you, you have got score predictions yeah. right as well. To be fair. <laughs> yeah, I'm now at a point where, like, I think, do you know what they should do, Marlon? They should. Um, alternate every game. So Stellini takes one game, Ryan Mason takes one game, Harry Kane decides he'll be manager one game, uh, Daniel Levy comes down as a as a, shot, as a stint dog oh, out. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what I think should happen now at the end of the season because if I have to sit through the rest of the games watching Conte 2.0 football, I, I just, I, I like Holly, like I will watch the game for the sake of I support Spurs, but I'm really not that arsed what happens. Like, how do you feel? For me, I think today we need to play Conte ball. And this is going to sound really weird because I, um, I know everyone's really negative about Conte ball. I don't mind it. I, I've always said to people, I don't mind Conte ball. Um, it's not the worst football I've ever seen. I think if you get the 
best, the better players, they'll play it correctly. Um, but we don't have that. And Conte was never going to adjust to that situation. But against Brighton today, we need to play Conte ball just because I've, I've watched them twice or three times this season, and especially against Brentford last week, we will stifle them. We will, They won't be able to play the way they want to play. It's a bit like the away game. They try to play, but Conte ball, they just can't. I don't know what it is. They just can't seem to work against it. So I think the more negative we are today, the more it's going to fall into our hands, unfortunately. And it sounds really weird and odd to say, but I think we need to keep that up today. Only for today. Like After that, I don't care what they do. But if we try and go and attack Brighton, I think what Brighton did to Brentford, they'll do to us. We just don't like. Our, let's be honest, our back line's awful. So let's just take, play a certain way that we know, get it out of the way for today against Brighton and probably against Liverpool. Probably the only other time I'd say play it. But it's yeah, we can't we can't sit there and go and attack them when we haven't played it all season. Otherwise, they will open us up. They like the Zerbi has got them playing, and he like I've always said this. Potter was useless, right? He, that, there's a reason why he went to Chelsea and they, their strikers couldn't score either. The way he plays, yeah, he'll create so many chances, but they're not clear-cut chances. Where deserve has gone in, tinkered with it, and now they're scoring goals. So for me, I think, yeah, Conte ball needs to happen today. Um, unfortunately, for everyone else, all the Spurs fans out there, I'm sorry. It needs Thank to God it today. is on TV. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, that's the only way I think we'll beat them today. And I, I, I've said this all week, and a lot of people have been like, "Yeah, Yo, you're chatting, you're chatting rubbish." But I just see it. I just see it working against Brighton. There are certain teams that I'll see it working against, and Brighton is one of them. So I think we need to go with that game plan today, and then we can do whatever we like afterwards. But like you said, if we don't win today, with Liverpool, United, and Newcastle coming up as well, it's gonna be absolute mayhem. Um, but Champions League for me, I'd rather Europa League. I'd rather get Europa League next season. Um, Conference League, I don't mind. I want to be in Europe. We have to be in Europe for fut to future-proof ourselves, right? That's the one thing I'll say, because we need to just keep those points of, you know, when we do get back in the Champions League to do it. But unless something's going to change dramatically in the summer regarding who we sign, then I'd rather get Europa League. I'm, but it's all dependent, isn't it? I, look, I, couldn't, I couldn't care less where we end up as long as we just do something in the summer. But if it's going to depend on Nagelsmann coming, if we get Champions League, then obviously I want Champions League. But yeah, it's yeah. just one of them. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I think we all pretty much are. Holly, I'll come to you for the last bit on this. So I forgot to ask you if you wanted any European football, if you would rather we completely dropped out of Europe altogether and try and rebuild, as we keep talking about. And uh, after that, I also want to take your score prediction for today's game. Okie dokie. Um, I think I was at the point where I was like, right, let's just drop out of Europe because then they have to do something to rebuild us because then their hand is forced. Um, but then when Marlon said in order to future proof, we kind of still need to have our hand in Europe. I'm kind of thinking, oh, yeah, I think you might be right there. So personally, I'd quite like to drop out entirely because it has to force a hand. But then I'm thinking, actually, it sounds awful. But in a football businessing business kind of way, you kind of do need that European pool because at the moment we don't really have any other pool, um, <laughs> if I'm going to be brutally honest. Um, so, yeah, maybe Europa. I think conference, conference is a bit... I don't want to be one of those entitled fans and be like, oh, yeah, you're just going to bum off the, the conference because of the name. But I just think it's a it's a silly competition. But also because we didn't do very well in it. Um, I, I mean, don't want to relive that pull, again. Though, Holly, because you did mention about pull. You know, hmm. we need that European pull. Do you think the conference does give any no. pull? Because I don't. Yeah, you're right. No, get rid of that. Europe, it's got to be Europa, I think, if, that, if I'm going down that route of some sort of pull. Um, and in terms of today... <sighs> I really don't know. I want to say we're going to win. I just don't feel it. I think if I go for a one-one draw again, um, I might be able to feel a little bit better. I just don't. I just can't see us winning. I mean, I'm hoping we do, but right here, right now, I just don't see it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, you took the score line out of my mouth, so to make it easier <laughs> for our Twitter poll later, I will say a two-all draw. Um, <laughs> Harry, um, what are you thinking about today's game score line? I, I think I'm going to predict my my first wins is about January, so I'm going to go I'm going to go two one Spurs to, to be safe. I think it'd be tight, but I think um, Kane will make the difference again. 
hopefully Dan Juma. I want to see Dan Juma off the bench. It'd be great if he came on and scored. I mean, what more does he need to do? It must be something we can't see because when he has come on, certainly on his debut against Preston, he scored, for goodness sake, and he impressed. People say, oh, he had a couple of opportunities off the bench. Yeah, but we were playing terrible. The team was playing terrible. We, we never have the ball because of the way we play. And he's only given three minutes. He needs an opportunity. I would start him. Unpopular opinion, maybe, but I would start him. For me, Son and Kulisevsky haven't done enough to to secure their place in this team this season, especially especially Son. And I know, he knows that. He just hasn't done enough and isn't making a difference. I'll, I'll throw Jan Junior in there, but no, we're going to win 2-1. Lovely. Nice. And uh, Marlon, we'll come to you for a score prediction. And do you, you, know, do you echo Harry with Dan Juma? Um, I'm not. I'm, I, to be honest, I, it's one of them. He, he might as well. He might as well throw someone in there. He's, he's throwing Lucas in there. I, I was a bit confused when Conte got sacked and everyone was going, oh, Dan Juma's going to play, Dan Juma's going to play. When Stellini took most of the games where he didn't even come on. So That's you're kind of like, it, nothing was going to change. <laughs> but yeah, why not? Just throw him in there. But really, I don't, don't know if he's going to make that much of a difference to us anyway. Because as you say, no one enjoys Conte ball. If, if, if it's not working for Kulu and Son, what makes you think it's going to work for Dan Juma? So it's kind of, you know, and he's, yeah, he's not played with Kane yet, has he? I don't think. I think he's the only time he's played with Son. So there you go. Probably, yeah. Yeah. And he played in a bit in the, did he play in the FA Cup? I remember. This is, this is, this is where I am with Preston. him now. Yeah, yeah. Preston was his days. He came on and scored. Yeah. I thought we so, brought Kane on. He might play with Kane then. But, maybe. but as for a score prediction, yeah, 1 0, Kane penalty. There you go. <laughs> So we're going for two wins and two yeah, draws, draws today. Yeah. So at least not, that, not... Mine's with, with table though. If table is scrapped, we're losing. <laughs> so, But it ain't going to be that's... scrapped, is it? Let's be honest. Like It's going to be like this until the bitter end, until the end of the season. So, yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. Right. I want to thank everyone for joining today. Uh, we'll go around the houses. And Marlon, we'll start with you. Thanks for jumping on. How can everybody find you? Uh, so, funny enough, I'm doing the watch along on We Are Tottenham TV later. Um, so that's where I'll be. That's why, Harry, when you join a View from the South Stand TV, my channel later, it'll be of Harry. Yes. But yeah, right. if you just put in South U Coyers into, uh, into YouTube, you'll find our channel. Uh, we do match reactions, we do a monthly review now, and we're just going to, there's a new show coming out probably at some point next week with Ashmatic that we're going to try and see if that picks up as well but yeah we're trying to think of new content all the time but yeah come find us over there it's yeah the match reaction seems to be the most positive thing we get at the moment so um yeah. I'll, I'll plug that but yeah harry will be on later if you want to see harry if he's crying or not so <laughs> perfect mate yeah go, go you know as we always say you know just go and check everybody out there's always on on this show and, and every other spurs channel that you can to get your fix of spurs content we're talking about getting your fix of spurs content bloody holly agambar is splashing it in the YouTube world at the moment. How can everyone oh, find you? you? Uh, well, before I said it, I want to say thank you uh, for having me on. I'm sorry it's taken me so long uh, to come on. And even when I did come on, I was late. So I do apologise. <laughs> uh, but no, thank you. It's been it's been good to to chat about it rather than than host it. So thank you. Um, and you just find me at Holly Agamon. I just do Holly Hot Spurs uh, every Monday at 7pm to go over what's gone on in the game. So no, thank you. And make sure everybody likes, subscribes to Park Lane Pod as well. Perfect. Thank you. And Harry, how can everyone find you? Thank you. You've got my uh, firstly Twitter tag there. I'm here with you, Luke. Uh, sometimes Dave and sometimes Winnie as well. Every Saturday, 11am. Uh, sometimes in a positive frame of mind, sometimes in a negative frame of mind. Today I've gone with a positive frame of mind. Don't ask why. Um, I think season ticket prices stay in the same and the appointment yesterday and the thought of Levy stepping back from the football side of things as a massive say. Uh my YouTube channel, Scarfy Spurs Talk, now has its own brand new weekly show every Monday, 8pm. We've got Crackers On from Last Word on Spurs on Monday. The response has gone down well. I'm really excited about that. Uh, so get in touch if you want to come on because you have special guests on uh, every single week. Holly, I would love to get you on, but obviously with your show, it clashes at the same time. <laughs> so we have to try and sort that out at some point. But yeah, also go subscribe to Part Lane Podcast as well as my channel and check a view from the South Stand and Holly Hotspurs out because, you know, they're both fantastic channels as well. So thank you for having me on again, oh, Luke. So I always the opportunist, Harry. I like that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. You know, make sure you're liking the channel. Make sure you're checking out all of these guys that we have on. Um, you know, you can you know where to find us at Park Lane Podcast on all social media. Uh, look, have a great weekend, bank holiday, everyone. 
Enjoy the game today. Let's pray and hope to God that the footballing gods go in our favour today and we get a win. But who knows what will really happen. All we know is that we'll be back here next week, 11am, Saturday morning, for your weekly host of Spurs content. Until next time, come on you Spurs. Come on you Spurs. 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 Spurs.